Welcome to your next lesson on sketch constraints. A fully defined sketch allows you to easily manage your design, as well as maintaining consistency and sketch integrity for future amendments and design collaboration. In this video, we'll look at sketch constraints, sketch dimensioning, and basic sketch equations to give you a better understanding of how this can be applied to your designs. I'll start by showing you the effects of not having a fully defined sketch. As you can see, when I click and drag on any of these sketch features, I am more or less free to move them anywhere I want. However, with an undefined sketch, you may find resultant issues later on in the design process. I'm going to show you the difference between a constrained and unconstrained line and the benefits behind them. As mentioned in the previous video, a blue sketch feature indicates it is undefined, black indicates a sketch feature that is fully defined, and purple indicates a projected sketch feature with the latter two being the only options where we cannot click and drag to amend them. Going back to the vertical construction lines, you can see a midpoint and perpendicular construction symbol indicating this is locked into the centre point of our projected line at a 90 degree angle. You can also see what these symbols represent by clicking on the constraint drop down. You can also see we dimensioned the line to be 70mm and the line is coloured black. Now if I click and drag on the endpoint, you can see this sketch does not move, meaning it is fully constrained. Ideally, we want the entire sketch to be fully defined, so we'll start by placing some constraints on our existing sketch. I can see here the arc we created is not tangential to its follow-on line. Under the constraints toolbar, I'll click on tangent, then select the line and the arc. You can see the two features are updated, and now when we move this line, we can see the arc is kept tangential to the line. This is also confirmed by the tangent symbol which appears at the connection point. I have also created a line which is not vertical, but I want it to be. This is easy to fix by using the horizontal vertical constraint. Again, select the constraint and click on the line. You will now see this is vertically constrained as denoted by the symbol. I'm now going to switch to the dimension tool to dimension our sketch and we'll first define the outside diameter. Click on the two features you want to dimension and simply place a dimension. You will now see that the line has turned black, meaning it's defined in the respective axis. As mentioned in the previous video, you can easily amend the dimension by double clicking on the value and entering the amount. I'll dimension this arc here as well, showing you how we are not limited to linear features and set it to a 5mm radius. I'll finish this process for the remaining features and you can pause the video after to capture the figures I've entered or into your own. You can see how useful the construction line is becoming, acting as a base point for our sketch dimensions. Now if we make any changes to the dimensions, the sketch will update automatically based on the dimension and constraints we have set, as you can see when I update some of these values. Finally, I want these two lines to have a collinear constraint, so that they are always in line and have the same outer dimension. The sketch is now fully defined and we can now look into another useful tip, equations. Equations can be used directly in your dimensioning, for example, this bonnet fitting needs a 2mm clearance on the diameter to give a close running fit. I can simply double click on the dimension to amend and add in a minus 1 for the radius. Another example could be on these two fillets. I always want the external fillet to be half, or at least less than the internal fillet. I can double click to amend, then click on the 10mm fillet as the reference and divide by 2. You will see the internal fillet reference in the equation and now, when we update the value, the external fillet will also update accordingly. Equations can be simple or complex and reference a number of predefined features making it a powerful tool during the design process. Now our sketch is fully constrained, we are ready to create a 3D model of our sketch which I will also use to show you a few other useful sketch features. Use the revolve command and revolve this sketch 360 degrees around the vertical axis. Also, just make sure your operation is set as new body rather than join. With sketching, you are not limited to the origin axis of your sketch plane. You can also create a sketch of any flat surface or any custom plane. With that in mind, Click on the top face of this flange and create a new sketch. 
We want to create eight holes that will form the basis of our threaded hole to be designed at a later date. Create a 45 degree, 56 millimeter long line from the center point of our body and draw a circle anywhere in space. We can use a coincident constraint to constrain that circle to the end point of our line. Now we can amend the dimensions and you'll see the circle follows with its coincident point on that line. Finally, add a 16mm diameter dimension to this circle. We are now going to use the circular pattern tool to create our remaining 7 holes. Open up the circular pattern dialog box, select the circle as the object and the centre point of our body as the centre point for our pattern. The default quantity is 3, although we'll select 8 as this figure includes our sketch object for the pattern. Note you can easily suppress any unwanted objects to be patterned by unchecking the respective checkbox. We'll leave all of them checked and hit OK. Now we can create our holes using the press ball command to cut through the flange. You can hide the valve body component to make sure it's not affected by the press pull. Hit OK and we are now ready to move on. In this video, we explored how to constrain your sketch and place dimensions to generate a fully defined sketch. In the next one, we'll take a look at how you can define and set sketch parameters for an even more fully defined design.